welcome to our worship today it's february february the first when i'm actually recording this but this is the service for february the 6th from rochdale and littleborough methodist circuit welcome we are continuing our theme of time to grow and this week i've sort of taken out word trust because if we are to grow then we do have to trust and you know trust in our current society is a pretty hard one isn't it i don't know about you but i'm always questioning it doubting and in fact sometimes i get to the point i don't trust anybody it seems that actually we really need to learn how to trust again because so many people in our society are duplicit i'm not going to go into details but you know some of the things that are happening in the news um if i go on anymore it might become a part of political broadcast on behalf of the christian party but you know trust us money has a symbol or the words on it in god we trust but that phrase has lost its meaning because it relates to business and money and government and banks and stocks and shares and all of that and the term in god we trust has actually i think become a bit of a cliche do you do we ever give our complete trust to god when the tangible role models that we have abuse it and misuse it it's hard to give to an ethereal being. It's hard to give it to God. It's hard to let go. And I do think that this week we've been reminded that it's important that we do. That it's important that we do release that part of us that holds on to being in charge and leading ourselves rather than being led we know or we should know without a doubt that we're loved by god he only wants the best for us but can we trust in that unconditional love in that belief can we dare to love in that way in the story that we're going to consider today we're going to think um about a miraculous catch that happened when Jesus' disciples did trust him completely. They probably went into it with scepticism, but maybe that's what we need to do too. They went into it when everything humanly possible had failed. And incidentally, just as something else from the news, the 6th of February 1952, was the day when Queen Elizabeth found out she was going to be Queen. Her journey of trust began on this day, all those years ago. She was sitting, apparently in a tree house in Kenya at the time. And that's when it began for her. And whatever you think about the Queen, she always puts over that I do trust in god to us i think and um i'm sure the words of psalm 23 the lord's my shepherd i'll not want is very familiar to her and the stuart townsend version of this has the words and i will trust in you alone so we start our worship today with that song The Lord's my shepherd, I'll not want. He makes me lie in pastures green. He leads me by the still, still waters. His goodness restores my soul. 
of the reading one of the readings that's actually set for today on a seashore be nice to be there in february wouldn't it the disciples were tired the crowds were gathering they'd heard of miracles that jesus had done jesus had driven out an unclean spirit he'd healed simon's mother-in-law and because of the crowds he got in a boat and why did he why did he do that is it so he wouldn't be crowded it was it because more people would see and hear him or was it because he was about to perform another miracle and as jesus finishes speaking he asked simon to put down the nets simon was an experienced fisherman and they'd already been out that morning and caught absolutely nothing but it was Jesus who asked him to do something. Simon did it. He obeyed. He obeys even though there's a large crowd watching. Now that must have been quite a thing to do. You know, he put his trust there. What could that do to his reputation as a fisherman if it didn't work? Trust in this man who'd given him that opportunity. Yet. Yeah, 
because he actually does know Jesus, he does what he's told. And I guess I'm asking you that question. You, if you know Jesus, do you always do as Jesus tells you? I'm raising my eyes. Simon was experienced. He had a reputation that could be damaged, but he knew that he needed to trust Jesus. And because he did, he was truly amazed. I don't imagine for one minute he thought there was going to be this miraculous catch of fish. He just did what he was asked because he knew he was in the presence of Jesus. Now Jesus then went on to tell his disciples from now on, that's what you're going to do, but it won't be fish you're catching, it'll be people. Oh my! what a task and what did that mean but they in that call actually went and followed and again we're at that covenant that promise theme are we ready to follow in this way are you willing to leave things behind everything in fact in this story Jesus will use us when we do that. We just have to be willing to trust, to obey and to follow. And the question for you and for me is what holds us back? Is it what others think? Is it what we think of ourselves? With Jesus, we are actually all welcome. You and me and everyone else and that trust runs through the bible with so many different stories there's another story today um which we've not even really going to consider much about isaiah way 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 before jesus who um whose lips were touched with a burning coal which instantly changed him and then he had that choice did he follow jesus or did he not what have we touched that's made us change our path? Will you touch something today, this week, that will make you change your path? We also see many others choosing to leave behind the life that they once had. And when we make our commitments, it changes us. Life will never be the same again. We are asked to turn away from our old ways, start a new life. And that's a constant regeneration almost of ourselves. What is it that you need to turn away from now that's getting in the way of you following? We've seen many illustrations of trust, team building exercises. You know, those where you fall backwards and you trust on the person behind you. Trusting that people catch them, blindfold, follow my leaders, being guided through the obstacles in a path. What does that mean for us? What things are getting in the way for us that we need guidance through? Maybe you'll share that with someone this week. And what does that trust mean for you now? What have you got to completely and wholeheartedly trust in? Are you willing to put your net to the other side? Metaphorically speaking, unless you go fishing. It seems that if we do, a new world opens up before us. And I was reminded of the Disney song, a whole new world, a new fantastic point of view. A whole new world opening up of abundance and joy, of possibilities, of growth. That word's coming back. Growth in our mindset, growth in our experience, growth in our understanding, 
growth in our compassion and our love and our care for others with fewer limitations when we trust. Next week we're going to maybe have a look at that theme of living in faith with no limitations and what that means. Until then, I say farewell. Just remember that God has searched you and he knows you. He knows everything about you, even though you perhaps don't even yet realise that. And we are in his hands. Let's sing together. Oh God, you've searched me and you know me. Just another way of saying we're committed. And yes, I am following and I will follow and I'm prepared to follow. And a final blessing. May God's blessing be with us as we go. A blessing from the one who calls us together. A blessing from the one who never deserts us. A blessing for life in all times, in all places. A blessing from our gracious God. God be with you till we meet again. And I hope that you this week will be able to trust just a little more. Bye.